Hello everyone, welcome back to Bridgestone World Solar Challenge TV and our wrap for day three. And boy, what a day it's been. Our leaders cross the border into South Australia. And in the Challenger class, it's another night of roadside camping, while entrants in the other two classes can enjoy a recharge in Alice Springs. Now the weather played a huge part in today's proceedings. Strong winds, while they wreaked havoc for some of the teams, most notably Kayit Spirit from Japan. Well, their campaign ended abruptly when their car was blown off the road just short of the Devil's Marbles. The good news from the incident, there are no injuries for the crew and they've all arrived safely into Alice Springs along with their trailered vehicle. And their compatriots, Team Tokai, well, they narrowly avoided a similar incident when they outran a Whirly Whirly at lunchtime. Now, the wind didn't cause any problems for Team Eindhoven. In fact, it helped the Dutch clock a speed of 120 kilometres an hour. All that with three passengers on board. In fact, they were cruising along just like a family sedan. In the outback town of Tea Tree lies Australia's most centrally located pub. And we caught up with some of the teams as they enjoyed a well-earned break at the control stop. Day three of this solar power journey sees the team spreading out along the Stewart Highway. The front runners have already passed through the Tea Tree control stop, but we're here to see how the rest of the teams are traveling. So far, so good. Um, we, you know, they're all fast cars. We had a little bit of a breakdown on the first day, mechanical wheel problem, but everything looks fine today. We've got good sun, sunlight and a straight flat road. So yeah, we're gonna be in Alice Springs by tonight, I think. Uh, we've had some struggles uh, along the way, but um, we're, we found a way around them uh, and we're making it through, so we're, uh, we're coming up. We decided to run it at sort of like a little bit of a lower speed, reserve energy a bit, capture more from the sun, and yeah, it's going good so far, and we're bound to hit our Alice Springs at about 4.30, 5 o'clock if everything goes to plan. We've been travelling at around 80 kilometres an hour, and uh, everything's been working very, very good. Awesome. We actually have a lot of energy and no problems at all. Uh, our batteries are well prepared for our next uh, journey here in a few minutes. Uh, we've been travelling alright. We've had a few hiccups along the way. Um, been having trouble trying to get the fairing doors to work quite right. But we're making every control stop, sometimes just, <laughs> but we're um, getting down there. The ultimate aim for many of the teams is to reach all the control stops before they close, thereby travelling the whole distance powered by the sun. We spoke to Dr. David Snowden to find out how the teams can achieve this. Well, we've seen the front runners go through here late last night, and now we're looking at various cars coming in. And one of the, the big things we've seen is um, that, especially with the, with the tail runners, this control point is very hard to reach. It's a, it's a tough, a tough environment. There's people that have had breakdowns. There's people that have um, had motors have lost magnets because of the, of the rough terrain. I mean, it's absolutely punishing for these cars. If the car doesn't make it to a control point before it shuts. It's allowed to miss one control point. Um, if they miss two control points in a row, then they have to call up Mission Control and ask them what they want to do. And that'll normally be that the team will be asked to trailer forward to some location further down the road. So what it becomes is a competition between two groups. The teams that have made it the entire distance, they, they're competing based on the amount of time it's taken them to get from Darwin to Adelaide. But the teams that haven't made it the entire distance are really competing based on how far they've actually made it. And that, that becomes an interesting competition in itself. The University of Minnesota have had a trying few days and arrived 10 minutes after the control stop closed. But they still had ambitions to make it to Alice under their own steam. Yeah, we only missed it by about 10 minutes, so uh, we're not too worried about it. Uh, we've been having some issues with our motor controllers. Yesterday we blew up two of them and then uh, we worked all night, went through, we rebuilt some motors and tore apart the controllers, swapped in some spares and we got out there this morning and instantly something happened, we don't know what really, and then we tossed on a, a different brand controller and we've been running all day on it. So, But uh, we've made up a little bit of time since then, so we should be pulling into Alice right at uh, a little bit before five o'clock. What we'd be expecting for Minnesota to do and for their strategists to try and do is work out how fast they have to go in order to get to Alice when they need to get there so that they don't have to trailer. And um, we'd be expecting them to go, you know, slightly over that speed in order to, you know, random possibilities or driver changes or something like that. But we'll be expecting them to just cruise on what they need to do in order to get there. And if they make it without trailering, it'll be a fantastic achievement. The road between Darwin and Adelaide is pretty straight, but there are a few twists and turns developing in this future fueled adventure. Now don't forget you can find out how your favourite team fared on day three by visiting the results board at the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge website. 
So with all that said, let's take a look at the results at the end of day three. In the Clipsal and Schneider Electric Challenger class, the Dutch Nuon team are 69 kilometres short of Cooper Pedy and hold a 20k lead over Japan's Tokai University. So this is surely the battle to watch over the next few days as it looks like it could go down to the wire. A further 120 k's behind Tokai is Solar Team Twente, who round out the top three. In the Michelin Cruiser class, it seems the cream is rising to the top, with Team Eindhoven first to arrive at Alice Springs. They got there at 1.44 p.m. today. They were followed by Uni of New South Wales 17 minutes later, who were able to overtake Power Course Sun Cruiser, who struggled in today's windy conditions. And finally, in the GoPro Adventure class, Aussie entry Aurora Evolution is on top, they lead Chile's Anticara. Looking at the weather and the winds will be up again tomorrow. Plenty of dusty conditions, which is going to make life very tough for the entrance. Now the leaders, they'll pass through Cuba PD in the morning and should end up in Port Augusta by the end of the day. That forecast will certainly influence the cat and mouse tactics taking place at the front of the field. And Team Eindhoven, well given the speeds they clock today, they'll need to keep an eye on the 110 kilometre speed limit in South Australia. What a fantastic day three we've had here at the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. Make sure you join us tomorrow as we bring you the latest from the Stewart Highway as the closing chapters of the challenge begin to unfold. We'll see you then.